Hello everyone. So this is to pick up and show one way in Excel to map visualize data itself. If you've watched the descriptive statistics video, the quick one on how to use the data analysis tab, you can see it's even open up here. Data analysis descriptives. This is the same data set that I use for that one. It reflects the John Hopkins dashboard on COVID in the United States. I'll pull that up here and pull it over. This is the GitHub. It reflects the daily reports. And today we're gonna to look at the case fatality ratio and look at that across the US for counties that we have information data on. Again, I pulled this for October 17th. You can go on here, it has daily updates, but it pulls the same information that you see on their dashboard that's super helpful to give us ideas of what's going on in the US. You can also look around the world, but I highly recommend taking a look at it if this is of interest. It's an easy way to look and analyze data on your own. They make it fairly easy for anyone to pull and use the data themselves for. All right, so you see in front of you, if you download, it's gonna be a CSV file. I cleaned this up a little bit. I got rid of anything that's not in the US. I got even rid of the US territories and a couple outliers within the data set that I saw that just weren't counties themselves. There's still a chance I missed one or two. I did not go through this with a fine tooth to the comb to see if I got everything I needed. For this demonstration, it's not needed, but if you were gonna use this for publication to present or report, I highly recommend going through each county with any data set for that. So in the newer versions of Excel, and this is what I like working with students for uh, to show how to visualize data, map data itself. So if you see here, we have a FIPS code that's unique to each county. You will notice typically a FIPS code for state and county has five characters. This one has four, and if you scroll down even to the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, it's missing that leading zero. So if we were to try to merge this in another program, that could be problematic. You need that first zero. For Excel, it doesn't matter right now because we do have other identifiers. So we have the county name, we have the state, the region still being the US, that's what I filtered out on. But we also have the Latin lawn of the county itself. Typically that's the centroid, the center latitude and longitude of that county itself. Then we also have confirmed cases, deaths, recovered, active, the incident rate, and the case fatality ratio. Again, the case fatality ratio is the fatalities divided by the number of cases itself. So that's where we get that ratio. So with that, if we highlight all of the data, so I'm just gonna click this up here and go into insert. We have an option here for 3D maps. Click on this, you wanna open the 3D map. Since I already have this data selected, it makes my life a lot easier. So I don't have to go back and select the data. So the location, I wanna start with adding, since I've already played around with this, I know an easy one to work with is Latin long. So I'm gonna put both of those in here. You can see the lat already pre-selected latitude for me. For longitude, it did not. So if I drop down this menu, you see I have other options. So if I had other types of geospatial identifiers such as XY coordinates, a city, a county, state, street, postal code, sorry about that. Even address level data you can work with in Excel and visualize it and map it itself. But here I'm just gonna identify the longitude and you can see here it generated a bunch of squares for the latitude and longitude across the counties in the US. Now that's great. We know what counties we have data for right now, which is nice to see. But given we have other data values that we're interested in viewing, we can actually plug that in and see what it looks like just from a visual standpoint. So say we're interested in making a heat map, so where high density, higher values show up. Right now, this is just showing generally how close counties are to one another, the lat long, that's why you see some clustering in these areas. Not surprising is the coastal regions and some of our major metropolitan areas. But if we change this now to a value, we can add in the case fatality ratio, and you now see where the higher fatality ratio is in the US. So you can see this is more, and we can zoom in. And if you're confused on what area this is, or you need just better labels, you can go up to the top here, your hit map labels, and it adds a lot of identifiers for us. So we know the New Jersey, New York area is a higher fatality area. As we zoom back out, it changes that itself. Here, this looks like more of the Atlanta region, yeah, in Georgia. So you see the south here has some hotspots, even in southern Texas. 
Uh, so we see that, which is nice to see a visualization of where fatality is greater when we count for the underlying number of cases, so our fatality case ratio there. Now, since we know that, we could easily switch this over and look at, oops, I'm gonna exit that one out. I'm gonna add in now the just incidence rate. So this is cases per 100,000 population. And we see a pretty different map here that we see a lot more cases in the South per 100,000 population or persons in that county. So that is a nice indicator of potential where fatality is higher compared to population as a whole. Uh, so you can do some interesting things here just in quick visualizations. And this is an easy way to see COVID if you're looking at hot spots and you want to see emerging ones. You can get into timelines and trends in that too. This is just one snapshot. We pulled this for October 17th and what was active at that point. This one's our cases per 100,000 persons. And not shockingly, we see some of these areas that if you've been following in the news, some of the hot areas itself. Wisconsin's been a big one lately that's been discussed. You can see up here that it is a higher one up there. Again, all I did here was change the value of this density map to reflect that. And it's an easy way to see oftentimes what they describe in the news, uh, hot spots popping up. Well, this accounts for the underlying population, at least of that county. And especially when you get into, sorry about that if you hear that, my dog is snoring in the background right now. Put her to sleep with this. If we switch back to the case fatality ratio, here we take into account fatalities based on the number of confirmed cases. So it accounts for that base. The denominator changes to reflect a better reflection of how many cases are active versus the overall population as a whole. So again, this is a quick little demonstration. I'll show some other videos in the future on different mapping applications. This, since I already pulled the COVID data for another assignment for a class that I'm teaching, I thought I'd go ahead and give a quick demo on if you're interested and just playing around and seeing how to map data in Excel. There are some quick and easy ways to do that here. So if there's questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks. Bye.